Namaste and welcome to this class. This will not be a traditional yoga flow, but I will guide you through some yoga poses that will be useful for your journey towards birth. These are some asanas that you can practice to get ready for labor and birth. All these postures will be useful during labor to uh, support your uh, body and to relieve some pain during contractions. So if you have some props that you will have available at home in that moment like pillows or a blanket, just grab them as they will be useful during the practice and I will wait you on the mat. So the first posture we are gonna uh, train is Padmasana or the Lotus Pose. This is simply sitting with the legs open into a crossed leg position. Uh, if you are uh, a trained yogini, you might be able to have both your uh, shins, uh, your legs on the floor, otherwise a simple crossed leg position will also work. I would suggest that you use a block or a blanket under your sitting bones. So it's just softer and more comfortable for you to sit for a long time. With this posture, we train our hips to stay open and the outward rotation of our legs or our thighs also helps to open the pelvic outlet and prepare for delivery. So get into the posture, take the lotus pose or a cross leg sitting position and you can close your eyes. During labor, it would be super important to have a correct breathing rhythm to ease the contractions, to follow the rhythm of your body, which is preparing for birth. It is crucial to to have a steady and a, a full breathing cycle. You need to relax your whole body and go with your body through the contractions. So make sure to sit out straight with your spine in its natural curvature. Soften your shoulders and your neck. At every inhalation, feel your body a little lighter. And at every exhalation, feel your body melting down with the mat, with the blanket, with the earth. Deeply breathe inside your nostrils, down through your chest, through your belly and down to your pelvic floor. And exhale, completely soften your body, release the air through the throat, through the nostrils. Feel your lower back relaxed. At every exhalation, feel every and each muscle 
softening. Scan quickly your body, go through the different muscles, through the different parts. Recognize if there is any tension and try to soften as much as you can every single part of your physical self. It is important that you recognize the tensions in your body so during labor you are able to consciously address those tensions and relax and release as much as possible between one contraction and the other. Keep your belly soft. If you wish a deeper connection with your body, bring your hands onto your belly. Involve the baby into your practice. Feel the baby as you breathe in and out. and maintain a connection with him or her throughout the whole process. Try to empty your mind and think at the beautiful moment in which you will meet your baby for the first time. That's the moment we are going towards and accept that the present moment is just a step towards that miracle. In your practice, learn to stay calm, to breathe fully and deeply. To lengthen your breath as much as possible, so during labor you will not hyperventilate and make your body stressed even more. If you need during labor, you can also search the support of the wall, just laying with your back towards the wall so you release even more the tension in your lower back and in your shoulders. Slowly coming back to your breath, with your thoughts, with your mind. Start opening your eyes and coming back to the room. Great. This is the simplest and also one of the more effective postures you can take, which physically prepares you for delivery and mentally calms you down and helps you face the labor. There are some alternatives for this posture which 
still help to keep the pelvic outlet open and facilitate the descent of the baby through the pelvis. If you have a block or any other support that you can use, you can go into fire log pose. This might be quite difficult if you are not a trained yogini or uh, your belly might not feel comfortable in this posture. Um, so you can use a prop to help yourself to get into this posture. The classical variation is with the shins parallel to the front of your mat, with the right ankle above the left knee and the right knee above the left ankle or the other way around if you want to change the position of your legs. You can also use a block or any other support in front of you to open a little more the upper leg to feel less compression in your hips and anyway get into the pose. This is uh, also a good variation to Padmasana. You can still take this pose, breathe in and out, concentrate on your breath and on relaxing your body as much as you can. Another good alternative for your sitting posture to enhance the opening of the hips, to train for labor, to train for delivery so you don't hold tension into your hips with, which need to be uh, really relaxed during uh, birth is Baddha or butterfly pose. Your feet sole are one against each other heel to heel, toes to toes, knees open towards the side. If this is too stressful for your hips, you can also use the blocks to support the posture. You can use also some pillows or your, uh, your nursing pillow around your waist is also a good option for this pos posture. Um, according to how flexible you feel your hips, you can have the heels closer to your pelvis or much more open. Keep your spine out straight. It is also good if you can slightly lay forward to enhance even more the opening of your hips. But this might get a little tiring at the end of your pregnancy. So just uh, explore what your body needs. Maybe you can do this during the last months to train your body for the very special moment of birth. We move to the second posture of our practice for labor. This is a simple Majjari Asana or cat and cow pose. I would suggest you to have a blanket under your knees to make your posture even more comfortable. And we simply place our hands onto the mat. Open your fingers wide, feel rooted with your hands onto the earth and have your knees just aligned with your wrists. Wrists under the shoulders, knees under the hips knees, hips distance apart. This position is very useful during labor as we are free to move our pelvis from nutation to counter nutation. These two positions also help the baby to move down through the pelvis during uh, delivery. So you get a feeling of 
how it would be useful to move at the later stage of the birthing journey. This helps you also to release pressure onto your hips during contractions and you can freely move and explore whether a position or another helps you to relieve the pain. As you inhale, you go into cow pose, so softly pressing the belly towards the ground, lifting the chin up and lifting your hips, ideally towards the ceiling. As you exhale, your pelvis move downward, the back crawl towards the ceiling, you push actively the floor and your chin draws towards the chest. Keep moving with the flow of your breath as you inhale, open into cow and as you exhale, move towards cat pose. During labor, you will be free to do any movement that makes you feel good in that moment. So feel also free to move your hips in circle as you inhale and exhale. We change direction. And another option and variation can also be to move from cow pose to balasana. Maybe you will need to open your legs a little wider to make space for your belly. But if this movement makes you feel good during labor, just do so, move your body. Every movement helps you to ease the contractions to maintain your body active you don't have to push hard just soft movements without getting tired just to feel your body to keep feeling your body and also helping relieving any stress and tension. In Martariasana we can also explore the different position of our pelvis, as I said, from nutation to counter-nutation. Move your coccyx, move your hips, Feel your hips so you are able to get used to their movements and also to manage these movements during birth. Relax and release, come back to neutral position. And sit back onto your heels. We now move to a standing posture to perform some squat. Widen your legs on the mat, uh, wider than your hips, but don't exacerbate too much uh, the distance between your legs. 
you can rotate your toes in order to keep your heels oriented towards the middle of your body and your toes uh, 45 degrees away from your body. We start sitting and adjust the position of the feet. Every squat that we can take during labor is helpful again to open the pelvic outlet as we rotate outward our thighs and the squat also exploits gravity to uh, help the baby on his way towards the pelvis. into the squat position, gravity, and the weight of your body encourage dilation, which will be useful to ease the birthing process. We can take a goddess squat and alternate between standing and extending your legs and getting into the squat. This might be quite tiring during labor, so just train yourself in the weeks before. Train your body to this posture in order to prepare your hips for delivery. We can completely extend our body as we lift up and bring your hands onto your heart as we sit into goddess squat. Inhale, lift. And exhale, lower. Another alternative for a squatting position to assume during labor or uh, to train your uh, pelvis and hips for labor is Malasana or the yogi squat. Carefully and bending the knees, progressively reach the ground and sit down with your spine straight as much as you can. With your elbows you're going to open the knees wide and stay here. You might not reach the ground with your heels. If you want, you can also stay on your toes. That's perfectly fine. And especially uh, since this is a very tiring posture um, after a few breaths, you might also want to use a support under your sitting bones. You can use a block to support your posture, to release pressure coming from your belly onto your hips and train your hips to stay wide, open. Inhale and exhale. Try to get your body used to the posture. With the help of the block, you release a lot of pressure from the ankles while still training your hips. I want to guide you through a last squat variation. You can bring your heels near to each other, open your legs wide 
actually sitting almost or completely onto your heels and staying into this posture for a few breaths to again train your hips to stay wide and open and to help your pelvic outlet to stay open as well. If you need a support, just go for it. Grab a chair, uh, grab anything else that can help you to stay balanced into this posture. Keep inhaling and exhaling. And on next exhalation, bring your hands to the ground and release your knees. For the next posture, you will need the help of a chair or if you can train with a partner or with a partner with whom you will be during labor, it's great. He or she can help you to relieve a bit of pain in your back. For the meanwhile, let's use a chair, which is available for every one of you at every moment. We are going to use it to support our back. So you just stay on the back of your mat at a, a nice distance from your chair in order to be able to grab it with your hands. Uh, you might want to have your legs quite open to make space for your belly and you can grab the upper part of your chair and abandon almost your back. Use the chair to stretch your back, to stretch your shoulders, your arms. Try to keep your hips over your um, ankles and use this posture at any time you need to relieve some pain some weight from your lower or upper back this posture during labor helps to release pressure of the hips of the back it also helps to open the pelvic outlet and support the movement of the baby towards the pelvis. You can stay in this posture as long as you like, as long as it feels good. If your partner is with you, you can grab his or her hands and hold onto him Your partner can also be behind you and lift you uh, from above, grabbing your hips and lifting them up so you can hang onto the hands of your partner. And inhale slowly, lift up. You can bend your knees and support your body to lift. This position is just as simple as that and is super useful for your back. And we now get to the final posture, which will probably be your favorite during a tiring long labor. We will lay on one side, keep your blanket and a pillow or a bolster at hand and we just move down use the blanket as a pillow under your head you can simply be in this posture or prop this posture a bit with the help of a bolster You can lift your upper leg and as 
assume this posture in which your hips are aligned but the help of the cushion will be useful to release pressure off the hips. It is a super nice posture to meditate on your labor on the end of your journey which is approaching. To align your hips even better you might use two pillows, two bolsters or if you have blocks you can also use the blocks to lift the bolster even more and make a higher support for your leg so your hips are perfectly aligned and simply stay here connect with your breath and your body Connect with your baby. Embrace your journey into labor as the journey that will lead your baby in your arms. And take advantage of this last moments of your sacred journey into pregnancy to thank your body to embrace the changes to express some gratitude and to think about the beautiful mother that you will be. I really encourage you to use these poses in your daily practice to train your body for labor and delivery and I wish you all the best for the final stages of your journey. Namaste.